Alrighty then, well, let's see. Let's figure out a couple things here. Man, it's bright in here. So, uh, headed up to uh, Phoenix, Arizona today. Um, I actually found a couple of fiddles for sale on Craigslist, believe it or not. The photos were just unbelievably shitty and um, however when you've been sleuthing out fiddles for as long as I have you develop ways to sort of read between the lines and look for hints and clues as to what's actually going on so um, there was a uh, a violin in particular that I took an interest in uh, that if it was what it was purported to be would have been a most extraordinary violin uh, to find. As it turns out, to make a long story short, the violin that I took the most interest in was owned by was actually owned by a 97 year old Armenian man who lived in a uh, assisted living facility up in Phoenix Scottsdale area to be exact and um, And here again, to make a long story a little bit shorter, I actually had a conversation on the phone with the aforementioned 97-year-old man. And it was a, one of the most extraordinary conversations that I have had with any human being in years. We had about a 20-minute conversation. This guy was as sharp as a person half his age. He was an amazing, an amazing soul. Um, the violin in question was actually in the possession of his son, who lived in a suburban area of Scottsdale, Arizona, which is a suburb of Phoenix, a rather upscale suburb, I might I might add. So I drove up there. <clears throat> it was quite a uh, quite an adventure driving up into the bowels of Phoenix. Phoenix is just like I mean I live in Tucson, which is a couple of hours south of Phoenix. Phoenix is just it's out of control, man. The traffic on the highways. It was uh it was it was arduous trying to find my way to this guy's house but I ultimately prevailed and the violin that I had been seeking uh, to get a glimpse at was this one right here
The violin is made by Carl August Berger, New York City, 1923. Carl August Berger was actually born in Basel, or Basel, Switzerland, in 1893. Um, he trained under some of the the most stellar French masters, including Sylvester and uh, Macatel, and uh, he obviously. Um, uh, was recognized as having ex exceptional luthier skills at a very young age. Um, in the very uh, early 1920s, he moved to New York City from Europe, and he started working for Emil Hermann, Emil Hermann, at his shop in New York City, who himself was a uh, quite a. Uh, quite a, um, a spectacular maker. Not only of violins, but also of bows. And I actually owned a, an Emil Hermann bow, which I acquired from my, uh, my good buddy back in Missouri, who himself is a violin maker. Gregory Crone sold me an Emil Hermann bow. Marvelous bow. Greg Crone said that he p played on that bow for many years. Um, but then he acquired a, a couple of bows from the famous and quite well known Lee Guthrie, a fine bow maker up in, uh, I believe he's up in Minnesota. So I, I, I owned the Emil Hermann bow for quite some time and then uh, sold it to a friend of mine here in Tucson, Arizona. But, um, Carl August Berger worked in Emil Hermann's shop for only about a year before he he quit work there and opened up his own shop in New York City. This violin is dated 1923, which actually places it during the time that he worked under the auspices of Emil Hermann. In New York City. In 1924, Carl Berger opened up his own shop in New York City. And um, I think as early as about 1925 or 26, and thereafter, uh, Carl Berger began to receive uh, or began to win awards at some of the international competitions international violin making competitions and um, um, achieved quite a um, reputation for making spectacular instruments. So uh, this is the violin that I acquired up in Phoenix today from this 97 year old Armenian fellow who was one of the most amazing old guys that I have ever had the pleasure of speaking with. Now this violin's going to need some work to really get it up to my standards. But uh, I just thought I would share this little story. And uh, let's see, what day is it? It is the 17th of October, 2020. This violin will come up for sale probably Oh, I would say within a month and um, I really look forward to uh, getting it set up and restored to absolutely top-notch playability and so forth. Carl August Berger. It's fire branded in the middle of the back. C a B which is kind of curious because uh, the original German spelling of the uh, name Carl uh, apparently starts with a C the name Carl is often seen spelled with a C rather than a K 
However, having said that, the quite complex and marvelous paper label which is affixed to the inside of this violin says Carl August Berger and the name Carl is with a K and then on either side of the date of 1923 on the left side of the date it says Basel or Basel which of course refers back to Switzerland where Mr. Berger was born and raised and then on the right side of the date we see the words New York so um, that's all quite interesting um, an absolutely spectacular top-notch maker the scroll is of particularly amazing uh, magnificence for lack of a better word <clears throat> the deep carving of the volutes in the scroll is just a second to none I love the uh, scooped out lower wings the choice of woods the angled curl in the rib stock both sides deeply angled curl in the ripstock. It's just a marvelous violin. I look forward to uh, getting it set up soon. Have a nice day folks.